First of all, Dr. Savita Desai, consultant, obstetrician, and gynecologist, Kim's Hospital, Hyderabad. Next, Dr. Deepak Raghavan, consultant, urologist, Apollo Vatikuti Institute of Robotic Surgery, Chennai. And thirdly, Dr. Devashis Roy, consultant, uh, laparoscopic surgeon, Apollo Glen Eagles Hospital, Kolkata. Now, this is an interesting session. You have heard how the training should be given, and this time we are now discussing that some of the uh, uh, surgeons who have received the training and uh, what they found in their training and what is the lacunae in the training. I think so all those questions we are asking that will be answered here now. Yes, please. Can we have uh, Dr. Savita Desai? Hello, everybody. I am Dr. Savita, consultant gynecologist from Kim's Hospital. And on behalf of Kim's Hospital, I wish you all a very happy new year and hearty welcome to all the overseas delegates in the faculty. I'm here to share my experience regarding the robotic training. And uh, just give some inputs uh, how to make it better. Initially, I was very skeptical about the surgical robot and the training part, but went with an open mind along with my senior colleague, Dr. Nina Desai. Once I was at the console, my initial opinion was changed to these expressions. Wow, amazing, innovative, and truly intuitive. I went with minimal knowledge of robotic surgery. I had no exposure to any robotic, live robotic surgeries. I had not met any robotic surgeons. I just had listened to, attended two lectures, one by Dr. Suresh Nair and one by Dr. Vijayalakshmi Karni in our own National Congress last January. At that time, I thought surgical robot will never work in India. <coughs> Coming to the training part, Jennifer was our trainer. She was excellent and she knew her job. She made us comfortable and very friendly. Our training started with one day of animal lab and mainly it was system training. And we practiced some of the exercises like docking, operating at the console, suturing, knot tying, and in the end, we were certified that we're eligible to sit at the Da Vinci system. What did I understood? Why is this training so important? It's no more see one, do one, teach one. FTA has made it mandatory and instructed the Institute Surgical Company, the manufacturer of the Da Vinci system, that all, to give a comprehensive training to all the surgeons who wish to sit at the, and practice at the Da Vinci system. It's definitely a superior technology than laparoscopy. It's not easy, but lesser learning curve compared to laparoscopy, better ergonomics, user-friendly and surgeon-friendly instruments. Docking, I felt difficult and needs more practice. I wouldn't say these are deficiencies, but I think it could have been worked and made better. Offset training or overseas training, a bit cumbersome because of long hours of traveling. I think our traveling hours were much more than the hours we spent in the animal lab. Cost of training is more probably because of the traveling. Short lab timing, there were no discussions, no lectures, and no study material before the training, no assessment. How do we know we are ready? In the end, I knew the training had just begun and not completed. How to make it better? Well, keeping in mind the attitude, aptitude, and the surgical training and the surgical acumen of all our surgeons in our own country, I thought we should divide it into three headings. Who should be trained, where, and how? In who should be trained, there are senior consultants, middle level, junior, open surgeons, laparoscopic surgeons, and what about our nursing and the paramedical staff? Ideally, we should aim at the team training. The, every hospital should have a pre-planned strategy Select the team before we se they send to the training and see to that the whole team is trained simultaneously, accomplished in both the electronic and the mechanical devices of the system. Where can we have animal lab training in our own respective countries? Probably this helps in reducing the cost of the traveling and many surgeons can be trained. How? The most important thing, the curriculum. Objective, uh, st structured, standard, module should be there include study material before the training starts and a pre and post assessment should be made mandatory. This should be clubbed with lectures, discussions, simulation exercises, simultaneous observership of live surgeries, more time in the lab and on the surgical aspects, I think more of vascular dissection, lymph node dissection should be added. 
a complete team to be trained simultaneously, including the common troubleshooting exercises. While going through the several articles in the, about the robotic uh, surgeries, I came across this wonderful article uh, uh, published in 2001 by Dr. Chitwood. He's a cardiac surgeon and his team, uh, he and his team are the pioneers in designing various curriculum levels in the system training and the procedure development. And they have come across uh, five levels. One is a didactic overview, inanimate laboratory, animal laboratory, cadaver laboratory and operative observations. And in didactic overview, it is mainly about the robotic uh, instrumentation and the vision and limitations. In uh, an inanimate laboratory, it is mainly master operative console and operative cart and camera and clutch control. Animal lab basically training the console surgeon at the console in various procedures. And patient side assistant, which is very important, they should be trained in all these instrument exchanges, camera cleaning, cauterization, clip application, retraction, and trocar positioning. Cadaver lab, where we apply the first three levels to the body habitus of the human anatomy. Operative observation determine the differences from one to four and have more interactions with expert robotic surgeons. In conclusion, a constant and persistent interest to be maintained, more animal labs should be there, time-to-time -time discussions among the surgeons should be made mandatory in our own hospitals once we are formally certified. Definitely, we have to understand this is a better technology when compared to laparoscopy or in minimally invasive surgery. And one has to appreciate the differences between laparoscopy and the better instruments which are there in robotic technology and apply this in respective specialities. With this, a thank you. Thank you, organizers, for giving me this wonderful opportunity and a nice way of beginning the year. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Desai. We will take all these presentations, then we'll have discussion. And now we request Dr. Deepak Raghavan. Greetings from Apollo Chennai. And my topic I, that I continue is how our training in robotic surgery could have been better. So robotic surgery is essentially where miracle meets science. And the Darwin CSI system is the most advanced platform for minimally invasive surgery that is available today. Traditionally, surgical training has been dependent on the actual caseload. So it has always been a matter of being supervised and have a trial and a supervised trial and error on a real patient, and therefore it, it involved a prolonged surgical training. Now these attributes also exist to robotic training. So what we have been trained so far in robotics is in sterile drapings, in how the OR is set up, instrument interfaces, troubleshooting, emergency shutdown procedures, and some amount of wet lab. What we would have liked to have more, team training, life case observations, where you see actual surgeries being performed and real life difficult situations, case specific stimulators, a slightly more prolonged proctorship, and to have a forum. What we even need to have even more, know, to know about specific tro trocar placements in varied body habitat and software integration. Team training essentially is when you have a dedicated robotic team and you have a backup team so the surgery doesn't stop for one person being absent. And you have two surgeons who are trained simultaneously and perform together so that there are no two parallel learning curves. The one thing about robotics that we found is there is no feedback, there is no tactile feedback. And if there are soft tissue models that could recreate a human, and a human tissue texture, which could give us back at least a visual haptic, that would be helpful. To have a case simulation where you have virtual reality image guided simulations to allow a surgeon practice a procedure in three dimension on the anatomy of the actual patient that they are going to operate upon the next day would be the best way to know the peak instrument forces that he is using and the duration of time that the instruments are out of view and poking elsewhere. And this is very common, poking elsewhere when you can't see. A slightly more prolonged proctorship would be ideal where you have direct supervision by an expert and that would be one of the best ways to introduce a new technique for a, pro for a program which is just starting. Especially if there is a pilot console. So is there a role of a dual console in an OR? Yes, definitely yes. It's something like where you have a mentor who can control a pilot system to override if need be. Something like how 
a training school driver, uh, instructor is able to tell a driver what to do and when to step on the brakes. Software integration, if, since we can't feel and since we, we, we basically have only visual haptics, so if you have a software integration where you can have a pre-operative interfacing of the radiological images with the console of the, to map the tumor anatomy with the underlying anatomy, well, that can actually help us see through tissue. And so you can, you can basically identify no-fly zones, you can know danger zones. That would really, really benefit us. To have a, a, a group of dedicated, like-minded people who could, who could meet up and who could discuss on their achievements and who could also you know, discuss both the problems that they faced would help. So for all the critiques of laparoscopic surgery who wish to compare lap with robotics at every step, well, I would just like to remind them, the Wright brothers, when they started, didn't have a very good, very good model. But in a few years, they were able to fly. And thanks to them, we are in Jet Edge today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Raghavan. Now I request Dr. Devashish Roy to give his presentation. I'd just like to begin my talk by telling you how I got trained in robotic surgery and then my thoughts on the issue. Um, it all started by Apollo Glen Eagles, Kolkata acquiring uh, the Da Vinci SI system. Uh, this was in middle November uh, last year. And we had uh, Dr. Mani Menon, Dr. Mahendra Bhandari, Dr. Ketan Badani and others coming down from the US and uh, demonstrating live cases uh, in our OR. Subsequent to this, a team of doctors, including myself, uh, we went over to Roswell Park Cancer Center in Buffalo. Uh, this was in December last, last month. Um, Dr. Guru and his team were kind enough to accommodate us and we spent a week with them getting trained in, uh, in the use of the Da Vinci system. We mainly uh, saw urological cases besides using the simulator. Uh, however, there were some gynecological cases included. Now, I've been hearing about people uh, talking about how robotic surgery training can be improved, but I think the most fundamental issue, and that is applicable to me, it was applicable to me, and I think it's applicable to most of the people in this audience, is that there are two groups of trainees that will be coming up in the near future. Most of us are going to be established surgeons, either laparoscopic or open, who are trying to, uh, trying to acquire a new technique. And there will be new trainees who will be coming through the system and uh, becoming a part of the robotic uh, training or trained uh, doctors of the future. Now, for most of us, uh, we have a very important problem, which is a time constraint. How much time are you going to set apart to learn the robotic system and there's no end to learning. So I think it is, it is a fine point as to how much you can make the training robust, how much you can develop the training in, including all various types of software. But I, sub, I suppose what we underwent, I was actually very happy with the training that I got and what we underwent was that we went to an established robotic surgery training centers. The entire setup was geared to training people, including the backup that Dr. Guru had. Uh, although there was not much general surgical application, I must admit, because I am, I am a general surgeon, so I would, have exp uh, I would have liked more general surgical exposure. And we mainly saw radical prostatectomies, cystectomies, and hysterectomies. We, we had ample time to sit on the simulator. In fact, uh, one good thing about the Roswell Park Training Center is they do not allow more than two people to train for a week, which means that if you spend two days on the simulator, you actually get one full day for yourself on the simulator. You'll be tired of using the simulator. There were audiovisual aids, uh, the dry labs, and we had live animal operating, and that was a whole day's live animal operating for two people. Um, you could do more than one surgery uh, if, you, if you wanted. So what I enjoyed, I enjoyed uh, the number of trainees being reduced to the bare minimum, that it was a fully fledged educational and training center and they had a structured program. It was not just a one-off, I'm good at it, let me teach you the skill. Uh, it was a very competent surgeon who had more than 2,500 radical prostatectomies under his belt. 
Uh, and I thought, given my practice and the time I had to be away from my family and from India, seven days was, was optimum. How could it be different? I missed, I probably missed the most um, a supervised live operating. When we are all surgeons, we've been practicing for several years. We are safe, and that is why we are still here. And uh, I would have thought that for people at our grade, a live hands-on operating would have been beneficial. We did go to the OR. We, were, we held to the docking of the robo, which was very useful. But actual live sitting on the console and operating on a patient uh, would have been beneficial. Um, personally, being an Indian, being from Kolkata, I would have thought a venue closer to home would have been ideal. We didn't enjoy the 24-hour flight and next day starting the training and equally another 24 hours to fly back. So the, the training program in India, particularly Chennai, as Dr. Bhandari said, would be very, very welcome to all of us. And certainly the affordability. I was sponsored. Uh, I was very lucky. But I think most people would find um, like one hospital I know in India is charging up to two lakhs for training. I would have found that very steep. So making it more affordable, closer venues in the country was the way forward. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Devashi Shavai. Anyone like to make any comment from the audience, please? I'd like to add that, uh, see, what when you are going for a two-day or five-day program, it is basically an orientation program. You get acquainted with the robotic system. Otherwise, uh, the best thing is when you come back, you should have proctorship or mentorship for your first 5, 10 or 20 cases, then only you can complete a procedure successfully and then the mentor can correct you, mentor can help you. And now with this multi-specialty use of the robot, even if you have a senior robotic surgeon in any other specialty, he can give you a cover and uh, you can start your program and then you will learn the things in a much better way. So learning is a continuous process. It is cannot just finish in two days or five days uh, training or orientation program actually, you know. So that thing has to be very clear in the mind. Yes, Arvind, you like to say something? Dr. Arvind from Onaday Institute, sir. I started the robotic thoracic program at the institute with your kind blessings, with you allowing me the use of the machine in the urology department. Uh, I would just add that everything that has been said by all the speakers, starting from Alex to Dr. Devashish, going through theory and then dry lab, wet lab, cadaver, live operating sessions. But going by my experience, when we started, uh, the robotic thymectomy program at Ames way back in June 2008. What we did was to request uh, Professor Jens Ruckert, uh, yeah, he's here, Professor Jens Ruckert to come. Yes, I and know. he was here. We collected 10 cases to be done and we requested him to stay here for five days. Four consecutive days, we did two cases each day. Initially, he did those cases and I was assisting. And then I sat on the console for some time, then he would take over, some time he would take over. And then last two cases, before he left, he made sure that I am knowing all the tricks. And then we kept checking with him on phone. And today when I look back at how my students are training, I feel that this physical presence of a proctor at the time when we are moving from learner to doer, a presence of a proctor will actually teach you the finest points in greatest details, which to my mind is extremely useful for learning it and learning it in the right way. So programs going abroad, wonderful, absolutely essential, but finally when you transform it into doing it at your center, presence of a mentor at that point of time for the first few cases will be important. And now that we are promoting this multidisciplinary use, probably if there is a person who is well trained in one subject and he has another person who is starting in a different department, probably he can be the mentor because there is a lot of technology issues also which are involved and that will be a great help. But presence of a senior experienced person, when you start your first few cases, will be of very great importance. Uh, thank you, Arvind. When Arvind did the first day, I was myself was standing in the OT throughout day to yes. ensure that everything is going on very well in the theater because it is not only the surgeon and assistant but the whole theater, uh, OT staff and everybody and, is very and important. This was an OT which was already used to do. And, and same, same is the in Medanta Medi 
Medicity Hospital. Uh, we are always there when any other new specialty want to start. We as a urologist or senior person, we are always standing there to give a cover to them for first few cases. In case of any problem, we can certainly help them. And Dr. Khan in his talk, he has already mentioned that the, the urology team was a great help to them. So it is a good opportunity now when you have a multi-specialty, you can take help of your own person in your hospital. Dr. Gupta, I am Dr. Neena Desai from Kim's Hospital, Head of Department of OBGN. I had gone to Detroit under Dr. Pro Professor David uh, Asantin and uh, did the observership and animal lab. And Dr. Savita came later. When we came back, uh, the Vatikuti Foundation and our hospital organized Dr. Peabody to come. And urology workshop was done, and we had done three gynec cases that time. After a month, Professor Isentin came, uh, Dr. Sabitha came, and we did five cases under her guidance. Later on, Dr. David came, uh, Isentin from Detroit, and we did about uh, eight or nine cases. Since then, practically all of us have been trained, and the gynec onco surgeon, Dr. Jagdeshwar Gaur, has already done 20, and sometimes when we have problem, he helps us out. So the training, what we got, we are very grateful to the Vatikuti Foundation, to Henry Ford, and uh, we are basically, Indians are good surgeons. So once you observe, I can definitely say, and if you have a mentor, we can pick up and we are doing it. Uh, thank you, madam. You have summarized very nicely what we are just talking here, actually. No? I yes, Dr. Kavita from Kims. As Madam said, we had, I mean, I had, I, I undergone, uh, have undergone training at um, Roswell Park under uh, Kurshid Guru. Uh, I felt that was sufficient because it is basically surgery we are not learning. We have to learn the technique, the technology and how to uh, uh, attempt the surgery. Uh, I felt it was sufficient and I could do it uh, with the workshops. I, had, I have been an observer when Dr. Peabody and all came. I never handled the machine and I did on my individual without any mentors to uh, complicated hysterectomies. So the training was very well and I think that was sufficient. We cannot spend much more time than that. That one week was, uh, I think it was sufficient. Okay, thank, thank you. you. I think so. We can close this session now here and I'd like to thank all the speakers uh, for giving their presentation.